Hello and welcome to Just Board, the show about computers, microcontrollers, and more. Today we'll take a look at the ROC64. This is a single board computer running a ROC chip RK3328, which is a quad core 64-bit ARM processor that clocks in at 1.5 gigahertz. And the integrated GPU is a Mali 450. For memory, you have the option between one, two, or four gigabytes of low power DDR3 RAM. And for storage, there's a micro SD slot. It also has an eMMC socket, which gives you the option to add onboard storage if you have a module that's compatible with it. The Pine64 website sells 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte modules if you're interested in that option. There are three USB ports. Two of them are USB 2.0, and one of them is USB 3.0, which of course is much faster than 2.0 and is really well suited for things like external storage or web cameras. For networking, the board contains a gigabit ethernet port. Yay! Media options include HDMI output plus a 3.5 millimeter combined audio and composite jack. There are three buttons on this board, power, reset, and recovery, which can be used to provide external USB access to the onboard eMMC module if you have one. There's also an IR receiver, which allows you to control the board using a remote or any other IR transmitter. The board can be powered by supplying a regulated five volts to this barrel plug or through pin two. As always, be careful with your power supply and make sure it's a properly regulated 5 volts. The ROC64 contains a total of 62 I.O. pins split between these two headers. The first of which is a Pi 2 bus with a pin configuration that's basically identical to the Raspberry Pi Model B boards. I've already covered this bus in my video on the Raspberry Pi 3, so I'll skip that here and instead leave a link in the description. The other header is called the P5 Plus and it contains one 3.3 volt pin, one 5 volt pin, 4 ground pins, an I square S interface for digital audio, an S PDIF pin also for digital audio, and an additional Ethernet interface offering 100 megabit speed. In terms of operating systems, there's a pretty good selection. The easiest way to get started is to use the Pine64 installer program, which lets you select the board you have, the operating system you want, and then it downloads and flashes that to an SD card, which you can boot your Rock 6. From. You'll have options for Android, Android TV, multiple Linux distributions, including Ubuntu, Open Media Vault, Nextcloud, Laka, you get the picture. There are some good options. So what's it for? This board runs Android really well, and the distributions they offer for it even support the Play Store. I've had difficulty getting the Play Store to work on other single board computers, so the fact that it just works out of the box here is great. If you're looking for a device that you can plug into your TV, boot up something like Android, and start streaming media through it, this board should be perfect for you. I mean, it even has a built-in IR remote receiver, so I'm pretty sure that was their goal to begin with. And with USB 3.0 support, you can plug in some external storage, snap an ethernet cable into the gigabit port, and you've got yourself a nice option for a NAS, or a network attached storage device. This is somewhere that you can keep all of your files and quickly access them from other devices on your network. So what isn't it for? This board is really overpowered for your average GPIO tinkering and making. Yeah, it has a lot of pins that are mostly compatible with the Raspberry Pi, but you'll likely run into problems with things like software compatibility and a general lack of thorough documentation. So if you're looking for an educational board or you're a maker looking for something simple to control some IO pins with, there are much better options out there. Well, that's the ROC64. Go to the comments below and let me know what board you'd like to see covered next. 